This is shuttle launch control, T-minus two hours, five minutes, and holding. At the present time, the astronauts are on, in their van on the Kennedy Parkway proceeding towards the pad. Uh, at the same time, launch director George Page has just made a check with the weatherman to ensure that the weather is satisfactory for launch. He got back the, the information that, yes, we are go for launch, and also at our uh, sites at White Sands and at Edwards Air Force Base. The temperature at liftoff is expected to be about 72 degrees, the relative humidity, humidity 65 percent, and the winds uh, will be acceptable coming from the southeast. The relative humidity is one of those important parameters in the weather primarily because it has to do with the possibility of ice buildup on the tank. The low humidity of 65% is acceptable, and uh, we do not expect to have any problems with frost or ice on the external tank, uh, which is stable at the present time and has been for more than an hour now with in the replenish mode. This means that just very small amounts of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen are being added to the tank uh, as it sits there uh, at the flight levels. Stand by, 30 seconds. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus two hours, five minutes, and holding. Just a little over five minutes remaining before we come out of this built-in hold. At the present time, the astronauts have arrived on the pad surface. Their truck or astrovan is parking, and they should be getting out of it and moving toward the elevators, which will take them up to the level of the orbiter access arm, the 195-foot level. The, in the meantime, uh, on the pad, everything is in ready. Uh, there has been a go given for ingress of the astronauts into the orbiter. Uh, during the time that they were suiting up and uh, leaving the ONC building to come out there, a number of things were also done at the pad uh, in addition to preparing the orbiter to receive them. For instance, the liquid hydrogen duar or the white room, the, the very clean area uh, in which they will be uh, prepared for entry into the orbiter. Uh, they're just entering into the white room at the present time. Everything in readiness for them to get into the orbiter. Astronaut John Young will be the first in, and uh, uh, in the tradition of the Navy, the other night when we had to scrub the, uh, the launch, uh, he was the last to leave also. Uh, the suit technician uh, taking a look uh, at the, uh, the suits and getting the helmet ready to place on his head. The first thing to go on uh, will be the, uh, the Snoopy cap, black Snoopy cap that uh, he puts over his ears and is used for comfort inside the helmet. He's now putting the, his helmet uh, in place over his head, uh, as is pilot Bob Crippen. They will not be uh, completely locked in place and checked until after they are into the, uh, the orbiter seats. Uh, and they are hooked up to the, uh, the life support system there. The visors are kept up uh, 
All of the lines are checked to make sure that they are in the right places, that there's nothing that's pinched by the uh, putting the uh, helmet into the socket. And uh, they're preparing now for their ingress into the orbiter. Uh, getting into the orbiter is not the easiest thing. You don't walk just upright through a door. It's a fairly small opening in which they have to uh, crawl on their hands and knees over a little metal bridge uh, which protects the doorway uh, from anything uh, dinging it or uh, uh, otherwise bothering the seals that uh, are around the door that uh, help maintain the, the cabin pressure during their uh, 54 and a half hour mission. At the, uh, the present time, both astronauts John Young and Bob Crippen have their helmets on. Uh, John Young uh, just about to get into the orbiter Looks like he was gesturing, uh, is it okay? And yes, it is okay. He is crawling through the doorway now into the orbiter. We'll be walking along the uh, the platforms, which are really along the, the back wall of the crew compartment and moving up to his seat. Uh, pilot Bob Crippen gives a little wave uh, to the closeout crew in the white room, which won't be able to follow him in there. Part of that crew, though, is inside astronaut Lauren Shriver, who's one of the support astronauts, uh, helping with the ingress. Uh, they are inside of the orbiter now and uh, getting ready to get into their seats. Uh, swinging up into those seats, which of course are lying in a horizontal position rather than a, uh, a vertical position that seats normally are in, is not uh, the easiest thing to do. They have a, uh, just a couple of little toe holds and hand holds, and they swing themselves up into there. And the next step will be the connection of their biomedical sensors, uh, their headsets uh, to the comm side of the uh, uh, circuits, and their life support systems to the, uh, the air side. They use a uh, sort of a normal breathing mixture of air uh, unlike the pure oxygen that was used during the previous manned spaceflight programs. So astronauts John Young and Bob Crippen are on board, everything going very smoothly as we move toward pickup of the countdown at the T-minus two hour and five minute point. This is shuttle launch control. Stand by 30 seconds. This is shuttle launch control. The clock has started at we're at T minus two hours, four minutes, 40 seconds and counting. Astronauts John Young and Bob Crippen uh, being placed in their suit. The white room crew is in the process of uh, wiping down the, the hatchway, which will be closed up to ensure that they get the absolutely best uh, seal that they can there. Uh, later on, that uh, cabin will be pressurized, the seals will be checked to, and checked uh, for integrity to ensure that uh, they are holding properly for the flight. One of the first things that happens here as we once more begin the count is that the main propulsion system helium tanks will be brought up to their flight pressure of 4,400 pounds per square inch. Everything going smoothly, the leather, weather looking good, uh, all aspects of the shuttle looking good as we prepare for a liftoff at 7 a.m. this morning. We're the countdown at T minus two hours, three minutes, 40 seconds, and counting. This is shuttle launch control. Okay. 
This is shuttle launch control at T-minus one hour, 58 minutes, and counting. A little bit of chatter occurring as the crew hooks up their comm uh, equipment to the orbiter and begins to talk with the, the people that they need to do their yeah, checks yeah, with. Driver's coming on. The, one of the first things that was said uh, was by the orbiter test conductor for Rockwell, Chuck Hannon, who said that we hope we give you a better show tonight. And uh, Bob Crippen came back and uh, said we hope and, uh, we give you a better down. show. Uh, they also were told that uh, they hope they didn't mind stale sandwiches, that they hadn't had ta a chance to change out the box lunches which are on board. Uh, astronaut Crippen said we've brought along a new turkey sandwich. Everything going smoothly uh, as we go through the steps necessary to get us to a launch at 7 a.m. this morning. Stand by 30 seconds. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus 43 minutes, 20 seconds, and counting. At the present time, the cabin leak check is in work and apparently proceeding along satisfactorily. That is not completed until approximately the T-minus 30-minute point in the countdown. The closeout crew is finishing up the, the work which they need to do at the level uh, of the hatch that gives access to the astronauts, and then the they will prepare the swing arm to be moved back at the T-minus seven minute point in the countdown. The only other arm which has to be moved prior to liftoff is what's called the Gox vent arm or beanie cap. Uh, this is used for uh, gaseous nitrogen, uh, which is uh, sprayed on the, uh, the very top of the external tank to try and prevent any buildup of ice at that point where the liquid hydrogen vents, uh, liquid oxygen vents from the external tank. Both of those tanks have been at their flight mass uh, for some time now and in the replenish mode where we add just enough to the tanks to keep them at the proper level as some of them uh, of the liquids uh, boil away. Uh, this is just natural that they should boil away because of the very, very cold temperatures of them. Liquid Hydrogen, for instance, boils at minus 423 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. At the present time, the closeout crew up in the, uh, the orbiter access arm uh, is making sure that the thermal protection system uh, is in the proper configuration there. They have to actually screw some plugs into it, uh, which are threaded uh, into the, the TPS, which is on that hatchway. Uh, and was put on here in the orbiter processing facility uh, just several months ago. At the present time, everything moving along very smoothly in our countdown. The uh, booster test conductor has uh, asked to calibrate the solid rocket motor pressure transducers. 
these are the instruments which are necessary to provide the information which separates the solid boosters during the flight uh, once they have burned out. So it's essential that those pressure transducers be working properly to prevent any premature separation. The pre-flight alignment of the inertial measurement unit is underway and that will be completed at the end of the 20-minute build-in hold which comes up at the T-minus 20-minute point. The range safety officer has reported that the Eastern Test Range Command Test is complete and Bob Crippen is about to begin the auxiliary power unit water boiler pre-activation. At the present time, everything going along very smoothly in our countdown. The count presently stands at T-minus 40 minutes, 23 seconds, and counting. This is shuttle launch control. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus 35 minutes and counting. At the present time, the closeout crew is finishing up the various preparations necessary on the orbiter access arm. They have just swung away uh, the portion of that arm which provides the seal between the very clean room atmosphere of the white room uh, and the orbiter. It has a uh, sort of an inflatable seal that uh, presses against the orbiter just slightly to ensure that uh, we not get any uh, undue amount of, uh, of dirt or contamination uh, from wind blowing things up there uh, in the white room. We try to maintain the integrity of that because that is the area that people pass through into the vehicle. At the present time, everything going very smoothly. Well, we're waiting for verification that the cabin uh, vent was satisfactory, the pressurization was satisfactory, then Commander John Young was asked to prevent the cabin vent. At this time he opens the vents and allows the pressure to uh, leak out uh, at a predetermined rate. Uh, we're waiting for confirmation that the landing sites are prepared and ready for the launch and expect that they are. Uh, the S-band telemetry system uh, has been switched to high power and the Myla tracking site, that's the tracking site on Merritt Island, is adjusting their uplink command signals to the proper level. The ground launch sequencer mainline computer programs are in the process of being activated. At the present time, everything going smoothly. We're looking for a launch on time at 7 a.m. this morning. The countdown stands at T-minus 33 minutes, 10 seconds, and counting. This is shuttle launch control. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus 21 minutes, 42 seconds, and counting. Uh, we're presently preparing to enter the planned 20-minute hold at the T-minus 20-minute point in the countdown. The astronaut John Young has just been asked to uh, close the cabin vents and they will repressurize the cabin at that time. The primary computer data is being transferred to the backup computer in order for both of them to have the same date. In case of a primary computer system failure, the backup computer will take over command of the shuttle during the launch period. During this 20-minute uh, hold period, there are a number of things which uh, must be done. One of them will be to reset the clock, the countdown clock, and so you will see a movement of that of approximately 51 seconds in order to bring us out at a liftoff at exactly 7 a.m. this morning. We're coming up on that uh, particular hold at this time, about 39 seconds away from it. The weather aircraft uh, will be active at this time. We have a number of aircraft which will be in the air. They include weather aircraft and also chase planes. The, the chase planes will not take off until later at the T-minus nine minute hold period. 
uh, with the final plane being launched at T-minus five minutes with a very, very tight uh, constraint there. Coming up on the hold, T-minus 20 minutes and holding. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus 20 minutes and holding approximately one minute and a half before coming out of that built-in hold. The NASA test conductor has conducted a check of the major managers responsible for tonight's launch and determined that they are ready to support the launch as are astronauts John Young and Bob Crippen. The orbiter test conductor, the booster test conductor, external test tank test conductor, range safety officer, safety and other uh, engineers. The uh, NASA test conductor has ordered the countdown to resume, and we will be resuming in just about 52 seconds from now. Going down to a liftoff on time at 7 a.m., we have no weather problems here or at the primary landing sites. Everything continuing to go smoothly. We will count down from this point to the T-minus 9-minute point in the countdown. And at that point, we will hold again for uh, 10 minutes. One of the main things that will happen first in that uh, hold will be the uh, movement of the Gox vent arm or beanie cap back from the external tank. Uh, just a few seconds away, about 15 seconds away from picking up the countdown at the T minus 20 minute point in the count. About five seconds. and we're at T-minus 20 minutes and counting. A purge of the fuel cells, which provide both electricity for the orbiter and drinking water for the crew is being performed. At this point, the computer has changed to a program known as Major Mode 101, which is the terminal countdown configuration. At this point, the primary computer is can compared with the proper onboard computer to ensure that they are ready for launch. The NASA convoy conductor has verified that the landing convoy at the KSC shuttle landing facility is ready. Uh, in case of a return to launch site abort, the landing would be on runway 15. All of the other launch sites also have confirmed that they are ready to go. Just prior to coming out of the hold, we received verification that the pre-flight alignment of the inertial measurement union, uh, u unit had also been completed. And so everything moving along smoothly. The countdown at T minus 18 minutes, 56 seconds. And counting, this is shuttle launch control. OK, we'll go to manual transition of VSS drops one. Take care when you're ready. OK, uh, VLT will put that work. OSC, OTC. Stand by 30 seconds.
This is shuttle launch control at T-minus 17 minutes and counting. Uh, we had a little cheer go up here in the control center at the Kennedy Space Center when it was verified that all four of the uh, general purpose computers on board were communicating properly with the backup computer. This was one of the, the problems, this was the problem, which stopped the countdown on Friday morning when we were trying to have our first launch of the space shuttle. It was determined at that time uh, and after that we were not having a uh, successful communication between the computers. It was suspected originally that it was the backup computer uh, that was having the problem. And then after many hours of work by uh, 50 to 100 uh, computer experts uh, here and at Houston, it was determined that there was a timing skew or a timing problem between two of the four uh, primary computers and the backup computer. The two computers simply tried to talk about 40 milliseconds, 40 thousandths of a second too early to the backup computer, and it said uh, that's not the right time to do that, and it hung up the phone. Uh, however, the, uh, in the meantime, we have gotten the, the computers restarted, uh, properly timed, and they have been running uh, ever since that point, and they will continue to run uh, throughout the mission. At no time would more than two computers be shut down, and the uh, computer experts determine that that particular problem uh, never occurs once the computers are up and running and timed properly, uh, unless they are all shut down and then restarted, and only rarely uh, does that problem appear then. But as it is, everything going along very smoothly, as we come up on the T minus 15 minute point in the countdown, T minus 15 minutes mark. This is shuttle launch control. And uh, be off market. Transmitting AB on. Okay, and mark it A off. And be off. Okay, STD, that's 100%. Okay, copy. Double OS, how you doing? We're in work. Thanks a lot for program to update. Okay. Bill Sells, how you doing on your purge? Doing okay. Let me know when it's done. It'll be about 30 seconds. All right. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus 11 minutes, 45 seconds, and counting. Everything going very smoothly in the countdown at this point. The booster test conductor ordered the gaseous nitrogen purge of the solid rocket booster aft skirts to begin. The Chase aircraft presently at Patrick Air Force Base have been ordered to start their engines, and a check with all the test support team members has verified that they are go for launch. Uh, the main propulsion helium subsystem cockpit switches have been configured for launch, and the helium tank isolation valves are open. In just a few seconds, another check of the aboard advisory system will be conducted. This is a uh, visual signal that would go to the astronauts uh, if it were necessary for them to abort. We're getting within a couple of minutes now of the final build-in hold that comes at the T-minus nine-minute point in the countdown and lasts for a duration of 10 minutes. One of the first things that will happen in that uh, particular hold will be the retraction of the Gox vent arm or beanie cap uh, out of the way. That has uh, been up on top of the external tank. Uh, it has warm uh, gaseous nitrogen, which is used to prevent any buildup of ice uh, from the venting of the liquid oxygen tank. At the uh, present time, we're at T-minus 10 minutes, 23 seconds, and counting. This is shuttle launch control. SCP and EPD, how you doing? To about uh, 270. Stand by 30 seconds.
This is shuttle launch control at T-minus 9 minutes, 30 seconds and counting. Just a few seconds away now from our final built-in hold at the T-minus 9 minute point in our countdown. Managers are being polled uh, to determine if we are ready to uh, go ahead. Uh, we've had confirmation from DOD support that contingency support aircraft and personnel are on station and ready to support the launch. About five seconds away now from that final nine-minute build-in hold. We're at T-minus nine minutes and holding. This is the final ten-minute build-in hold. All personnel in the firing room have been asked to remain seated, and no smoking rule has gone into effect through the launch. We have had a uh, report from the orbiter test conductor or to the orbiter test conductor that they are go for launch. At the present time, we know of no major problems as we enter this final 10-minute build-in hold. One of the first events which will occur during this hold will be the retraction of the Gox Vin arm and we are waiting for uh, the command to do that at the present time. T-minus nine minute end holding. This is shuttle launch control. Stand by 30 seconds. 